Yeah. 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 Ye
You have your variance, three zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Next up is Mr. Prue on Boland Road. Is he here? Hey. Hi. Come on up. Um, basically, I'm looking to add an addition off my garage that I have now. Mm -hmm. um, it would put me over 56 square feet. It would put me at 1,056. And my house, it would put me over <coughs> 96 square feet, bigger than my house. Um, the reason why I would like to do this is um, I got collector cars and they're in storage units right now and I'd like to get them home. Mm -hmm. And you've got some other potential vehicles in the driveway. Right, like I got two well. teenagers, drivers, we got like five cars total yeah. right now. And the main part is I'm, you know, I'm paying for storage unit and just be nice to have the car. I'd feel more comfortable having the car on my own property. And, and you talked with your neighbors? About yeah, this? my neighbors are really, I talked to them all. They're all fine with it. So. Okay, questions? Oh. Yes, sir. Mr. Alderman, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I met with Jason. I'm, he's in my district and uh, looked at the project, it did not look like it would be uh, a detriment to the neighborhood. You can't really see any of the changes from the street. This is a bit of a narrow lot, so if there was a question, it would be on the side yards, but it would be basically the same basic building footprint. It would just be extended a little bit further to the back. Um, there might be some mi minor alterations on the sides as well, but um, he was very proactive in contacting me and letting me take a look at it. And a lot of times I don't get calls like that, but um, I was very satisfied with what he had brought forward and I just wanted to mention that. All right, good, thank you. Thank you. Now Paul, we've got, it, it's just a square footage and it's over by? Uh, 56 um, square feet. And then technically the accessories is that larger than the principal use. Right. Right. But if the total came in to, at 970, he'd be okay. He doesn't have any side yard, backyard. Yeah, guarantee if he came in. No, okay, whatever. 959. Yeah. Um, and it's, since it's connected to the existing garage, it doesn't represent an additional structure, so that's not an issue. It's just the size. Just the size. Okay. And the proportion to the principal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Questions for the applicant? Sir, if you can have a seat. Well, this is another one that looks to me like one that I don't have a problem with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Especially if we have a situation where this is more or less hidden. It's not apparent. Right. And it's yeah. not uh, something that's going to, and it's just a little bit over. So, yeah, and the back of the lot is uh, an old railroad. Right. So you can't, there's not going to be any. Uh, concern from the neighbor directly behind him because yeah. there's not. <coughs> you can't see it with the road either on the main side. And so. Okay, cleverly hidden. Yeah. I have no problem. Where do you go? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the variance that's been requested. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion made and seconded to approve the variance as requested to us for the approved property on Boland Road. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up is uh, either Mr. Barron or Mr. Dolan regarding uh, the property on Telemark Circle. Um, we are putting an entertainment uh, area in Mr. Dolan's backyard. Um, including a raised concrete patio, um, slab on grade patio, uh, around approximately 16 by 40 pool. Um, the plan that you see there is the approved plan, um, and we would like to go over the 50% um, allowed uh, impervious service, uh, surface on the lot um, with a couple of additional concrete areas. There will be a six foot uh, privacy fence going around the entire backyard. Um, you cannot see the backyard from the street. 
and the new concrete areas would uh, serve Mr. Dolan uh, better on the in overall concept of the entertainment center. So, so it appears that, that you started out with a plan that did get approved, <coughs> and then changed your mind and wanted to make a bigger. Well, bigger the original plan from what Steve was saying wasn't approved so we had to cut back on the concrete uh -huh. to get it approved but we would like to go back to the original plan okay. as far as the concrete patio and the sidewalk. In other words there's a uh, sidewalk that goes from on the left side of the plan uh, the radius of the slab on grade concrete to the gate in the fence. Uh, we were um, we needed to eliminate that and then we eliminated another 300 square feet of concrete um, on the right side of that slab on grade concrete patio to get below the 50% impervious surface uh, on the overall lot. If we deny the variance, are you prepared to go with the approved plan? Uh, we, yes we are. And what would be the argument for why the variance is required? Just, I mean, better use of the having more surface area of uh, concrete versus uh, other landscaping area, but like either uh, stone or grass in the in the backyard it was uh, was the purpose, just to have better uh, a larger area to like if I want to set tables or chairs or something like that okay. out there. And I have um, one letter from one of my neighbors. He does not have a problem with the uh, deviation from the, uh, the zoning code and the other my other neighbor next door doesn't have a problem and basically with the fence around it you're not going to notice anything and we're only talking about uh, probably at the most five percent more impervious so it'd be closer to about 55 percent instead of 50 percent impervious uh, uh, regulations you have on the lot. Okay, questions, Greg or Tom? Yeah. Pardon me? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank yeah. you. I couldn't hear what you said. We do have another uh, person who signed in on this that would like to speak. Uh, would they like yeah. to speak? Ms. We Lipke? would be the neighbors directly behind. Mm -hmm. um, we're a little lower elevation. And I, I was, when we, um, with the impervious structures, the reason that there's the limits is the water management. Um, impervious structures obviously don't allow the water to seep into the ground. They run off. So now you have an issue of storm water runoff that will create, it can create flooding issues where there previously had not been. The water has to go somewhere and it can't, you know, currently it would seep into landscaping, the ground, um, and so it's, it's, we would be the recipient. <laughs> um, it, would, it would have to go down and we're at a little lower elevation. Then when you have that pulling back there, you have flooding issues. You can have, um, and accompanying that, you have um, health issues. You have mold, you know, spores. It, it just damage to the er erosion to the landscaping that you have. Um, so I'm, I'm questioning the necessity of so much concrete. And, and right now there's a gentle slope to the yards. With this all raised, the water isn't gonna be staying on their property, it's gonna be running onto ours. Is there a flooding issue now or no? In the one, there, there's not currently um, but up to this point, it's just been a general, a gradual slope. This is raised, you know, quite a bit. And then with a the fence, there's not going to be any wherever. There also had been um, vegetation. There were trees. So they would be absorbing some of this water. They were all removed. So that, in addition, doesn't give that um, water a kind of a place to go. Do you know if there's drainage um, 
in, in between the lots there? I thought there might be something in the corner. Uh, there is not okay. uh, an obvious drain there. There's a swale between the houses and there is a collection area in essence. Uh, very sandy yeah. soil, very sandy soil back there. Matter of fact, we're using, uh, gonna use some of that sand to backfill our structure with. It's, it's that good. So, in your professional opinion, do you see any issue with water backup at all? The entire slab on grade uh, will be surrounded with uh, stone over the top of landscape fabric. Um, all of the waters that come off of the concrete areas will flow into those um, uh, stone landscaped uh, fabric areas. Yeah. If, if there would be a water issue in the future, what would be the remedy? I'm not sure what it would be. So we currently have a different property that has a pool. The land is basically flat for all visual purposes. Um, there's a very slight grade. And when the pool went in and you have your concrete patio, which is if you were to look at the yard, it's flat. Even just that bit, you, we have pulling because it, it just disrupted the flow. And so then when you have snow melt, you know, heavy rain, you know, rains, it just pools there. And this is more of a grade. And then with a fence and the, the reduction of the tree, the movement of the trees, um, we actually can't sit, you know, the trees had been a big factor, they would absorb, the, the water would kind of come down and the trees were there to kind of absorb everything. Now that's all gone. Okay, thank you. I'm leaving now on this. Because it's more of a convenience. Yeah, that's, that was my opinion right from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So the basis of our denial is that the uh, argument for need is not apparent. Hardship, right? There is not a sufficient hardship. And we, I guess I personally am, I, I've, I've no opinion on whether there's gonna be a drainage problem or not. Right. But the fact is, is that we are up here to argue why it's not a good thing. We're here to, you know, it's up to the applicant to do that. So right. I, I'm unconvinced as well. I make a motion to deny the request for variance. And I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion made and <coughs> seconded to deny the request for the variance uh, to the property in Telemark Circle. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Your variance has been denied. Okay. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Item right. number four. Who's here to <coughs> talk about you, Mr. Zepnik? I am. All right. <coughs> So what we have here is a, we have a lot on the corner of Elm and Elizabeth um, that's been very difficult for us to place a family in given the location. Uh, we initially submitted uh, a plan I believe back in 2013 before I was with Habitat for Humanity um, so I've been told. Um, when we placed a family in it um, over the past uh, six months or so we placed a family there and we submitted the plan that we had that would best fit this lot given its narrow um, layout so what we have currently uh, we've been working with Cheryl and a few other people down at the city to to help this house conform with the neighborhood uh, we initially switched the front door from Elm Street to Elizabeth Street um, and they gave us a list of requirements for our plans we did that um, such as higher pitch roof to give a better front facade uh, to match and conform with the neighborhood. So that's what we have now. Um, and what we have is just a setback uh, that we need a variance for on the rear um, would be the opposite of Elizabeth Street there. It's currently set at, I believe it's 24 feet right now. And we would need a to variance to have it be six foot as a rear setback. 
Okay. Otherwise, you can't develop anything. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I don't know what house is going to fit on it. Otherwise, I believe the lot is 42 feet wide anyway. So it would require a variance regardless. Okay, at this point, I'd like to mention that, that Mr. Hoy did make a, an email request today, Tom, if you wanted to explain what that was and if you had an answer to your question of the city. Right. Um, I expressed a concern with respect to the height of the building being a ranch, okay? Um, because uh, the organization has been before us with respect to putting buildings up in other locations. And they were typically like a ranch level. However, the number of buildings in that neighborhood were between two and three stories, okay? And those requests were denied, okay? Now, I know that you do real good work, and in fact, I've seen two homes on Chicago Street, the 1100 block of Chicago. They're really nice, uh, put together real well. They're also two-story, okay? And I express a concern about a ranch fitting in with the rest of the street. Um, I, when I drove down the street, most of the houses on the left and right were two-story or one-and-a-half-story, there were maybe two or three ranch. So I'm concerned a little about about the size of the, the height of the house that's being a ranch. Mm -hmm. Well, when I did pose this question to the folks here at City Hall, they said, well, because now that the house is uh, facing Elizabeth Street, yes. it is not, you know, it's exempt from that because there are other lower houses from the south of the location. And I would offer up this almost seems to be a way to work around it. You know, I, th I think the character of the neighborhood, uh, the majority are not ranches. They're one and a half or two story homes. And I'm concerned about it fitting with the rest of the neighborhood. So, but, um, and that, that was the main issue that we addressed by switching it to Elizabeth Street from Elm because all of Elm is two stories. Um, but Elizabeth Street does have that mix of story and a half um, ranch or two story. It, it's not, it doesn't stick out so much like a sore thumb on Elizabeth Street. Um, the reservation that we have with building a two story home on this lot is that we don't have the funds. We, when we do two story lots, when we do two story homes, we have to have additional funds because we have to pay subcontractors what volunteers would usually be able to do because of insurance liability. We can't have them on the second floor tag. We can't have them on the roof of a two-story house. Um, that's why we proposed this um, with an 812 pitch roof to give it the height of a story and a half um, without having to incur all the costs with a story and a half or two-story. But you were able to do that with the two homes on Chicago Street. We did that with additional funds from the Home Redevelopment Authority. You've already purchased a lot, too, right? We'll get to you. Yeah, we currently have a lot. Have you talked to the neighbors, though, on the uh, next two with the existing building? I have not. Oh, okay. I think uh, we have some more comments from the lady in the back. Hi, I'm Cheryl Renderwig. I'm yes. the assistant director for the department. I actually fought against this project when it first came before you. There was a whole bunch of them. And originally, this plan was a one was a one story that faced Elm Street, um, and it, it didn't fit into the neighborhood. And working with Habitat, and we've actually done a lot of work with them, there's been a new um, director now with Habitat who's very receptive to working on better story heights on properties and whatnot. On this property, though, it's a very narrow lot. And when you look at the, fa first of all, you're facing industrial on Elizabeth, and you're facing seagulls to the north. So it's, a, it's not a desirable lot to begin with. Um, and then when I looked at these properties, this property here is a story and a half, and this is a ranch facing Elizabeth. So I, I guess when working with Habitat, we said, well, maybe if we face it this way, and we make the roof height a little higher, and we made them expand the front face, we put some windows in the side of Elm, that it might be a better fit, difficult lot. We get a property on the tax rolls, because quite honestly, otherwise, I think Habitat's probably going to walk from this lot, because they won't be able to build on it. Um, so it'll sit vacant. So I guess in my estimation, just looking at it, I felt that was a good compromise. I don't think, I think with a new home there, it's not going to be detrimental to the, to the houses on Elm Street. So that's why I've been working with them, and I would support this project. And the neighborhood staff would as well. Okay, okay. And Alderman Nenning is here as well from the yes, district. Yes, Mr. Alderman, do you care to speak? 
Well, thank you very much for all the service you folks put in. I know you get difficult <laughs> issues at times. Uh, this is in my district. Uh, I live right down the street, actually, on Elm Street. Uh, and, uh, you know, what you see is what you have all around that neighborhood, long, narrow lots. And when you get corner lots, they're not the easiest thing to develop. And especially in this case, because there's industry across the road from it. There's Siegel Saving Center on the north, uh, the old Siegel Saving Center on the north, and then industry all along Elizabeth over here. So, um, you know, it is a lot that, uh, uh, that's been sitting there for quite a while undeveloped. And uh, I, I really think that, you know, the issue that's before you is about whether the uh, the rear yard setback, which is, um, is uh, right, right here, where there are variances uh, in order for that. And I don't see it have any issue with that. I, I think you know, it is uh, a reasonable thing considering the narrow lot and uh, uh, what they're trying to, to put on it. So I, I would support their request for that variance. You know, I do agree with you that in an ideal world, uh, we'd like to see two-story homes, but you know, sometimes it's not feasible. And there are other places, both on Elm and on Cedar, where single-story homes have been developed. And you know, it uh, uh, it's not a perfect world, but uh, you know, I think they're trying to do the best they can with a lot that they own. Uh, the house that was on there years ago was a nuisance in the neighborhood. And that's why uh, that lot was, was purchased and, and cleared. So uh, in terms of their request for this variance, I'm supportive of it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Questions, further questions, Tom? Okay. okay, sir, if you could have a seat, we'll have a break. Is there, is there a, any opinion that you care to, you know, you're not supposed to have opinions. <laughs> if, I can have an opinion. if you did have an opinion, what? would you care to say on this with respect to the city's interests that, that Tom has somewhat broached? Well, I think the key here is the, the change in orientation of the building. I think the Dallas Face Elm, there are two stories that probably should resemble a two-story on that lot. Uh, they've simply changed the orientation of the building to be more akin to the properties to the south and across the alley. So uh, I didn't review the elevation per se, but they've made efforts to increase the scale of the building to be more like a story and a half or higher. The challenger is the width of the lot. Right. For them, it's a real big issue for the rear yard setback. Well, absent the variance, there's nothing that could be put on this lot. They're back down the street looking at a two story house. Yeah. yeah. And they've been down that road before. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay with this, guys. And I understand the concerns, but I think that uh, the question, the specific question before us, is fairly clear as far as the variance needed to have any development at all. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure uh, the fact that they have worked with the city, though, mm -hmm. uh, I think in good faith they've done the best that they can. It disappoints me when I hear that we don't have enough money for a two story here, but we've got enough money over here for two of them. And, uh, but at the end of the day, I guess having something there is better than having nothing at all. Right. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the variance as requested. I'll second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded to approve the variance that has been requested for us for the Habitat for Humanity property on Elizabeth Street and Elm Street. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're good. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Next is item number five, Mr. Tetzner. Uh, what do you mean? Good evening. Good, good evening, guys. All right. Um, so in a nutshell, what we're looking to do here, and I just kind of pointed it out for you, um, I'm looking to put a concrete driveway in on this side of the building. Um, currently, I don't have any access to Howard Street, and that's where the front of the property is. I do have a driveway in the back of the building here, but it's only accessible by, the dry, or by this alleyway here. Now the problem that's happening now, this is a two family and obviously we're gonna have more than one, <coughs> excuse me, more than one vehicle. So 
there's very little parking space. There's a little patch of asphalt right here where the lower unit can park their car. But then this gentleman here, we're running into issues. He's backing up his car, trying to get out himself. So by having a driveway right here relieves a lot of congestion here in the alleyway um, and makes it easier for everybody. Also, I'd like to add that it's going to look aesthetically very pleasing overall. Um, and this is the plan. This has actually been, we revised it a little bit. We're going to go all the way to the end of the building with the concrete. And we're trying to stay a foot away from the building itself and then also a foot away from this gentleman's uh, fence line here. It's all going to, the whole thing is going to be concrete. It's going to work fantastic. Right now it's just basically a sidewalk that's all uneven, just dirt, and there's just a lot of garbage just collects there too. I noticed that there's a ton of broken glass for whatever reason embedded in this dirt. It's all going to be hauled out and it's going to look great. I already talked to this neighbor and this neighbor. Both said they were there fine with the project. So that's what we're looking to do. Okay, so you're the owner. Correct. Um, have you talked to the people behind you? I did not talk to the people behind me. I don't have a connection with them but they have a fence, a chain link fence right here. And my initial thought was, well, they could just take that down and it'd make everyone's life easier. However, when I started looking at it, I'm like, well, wait, they would have to take, they would have to eliminate a lot of this parking here in order for my tenants to be driving in and then parking right here. It'd eliminate a lot of parking for them. Um, so, they, that's not the easier route for myself, but I decided that this would be a lot better. It would look a lot better and just serve the purpose. And plus, I was told that since I don't have any driveway access to Howard Street, I was told that my property is allowed that. So I'm currently we are using that. So I just bought this property about a, at the end of August. Have you so talked to Alderman Zimmer? I have not talked to Alderman Zimmer, no. You sure be able to get a driveway in there? When I looked at it, it looked pretty small. It's small, but we're going to be able to get in there. I had um, three different contractors. We looked at all asphalt. We looked at uh, concrete, and surprisingly, concrete made a lot more sense. Also, with concrete, I don't have to worry about it fading. I don't have to seal it. If it starts moving on me, I can mud jack it. Um, the asphalt that's actually behind this property looks like garbage. I'll admit that. I'd like to replace that as well when funds are available. But with this right here, it's going to look great and it's going to last over time as well. So I don't have to worry about it, getting it sealing it and all that stuff. So um, it's enough to get a car in there and open your doors and get out. And that's exactly what our purpose is. Um, and it's just going to look a lot nicer as well from current what it's looking like right now so yeah it looked to me just gone google that it's really tough <laughs> it's a small lot yes you're, it is you're, you're shoehorning in my my reaction was boy sure would have been great if you could have struck a deal with that big parking lot that is behind you it doesn't seem to be being used for anything yeah, and I noticed and I looked at it and it would be they would have to take down mm -hmm. that fence I mean, I would even offer to offer it to take down that fence But when you looked at the logistics of their parking lot, you would eliminate a tremendous amount of parking space And right now it's the Democratic headquarters obviously after the election season I'm sure they're gonna probably sell the building or something like that the new tenant is definitely gonna want to utilize all that parking space especially being so close to downtown um, so, especially with the quick trip going in right behind there, I've even noticed just since owning it, there's a lot of traffic up and down that alleyway, and if we can free that up as much as possible, it would be beneficial for everybody, so. It's a very awkward piece of property. It's a, it's an awkward piece of property, um, but I liked it. I live on Howard Street myself. And when I had the opportunity to, to buy an investment property, I thought I'd start in my own neighborhood first. I like the opportunities that it presents because it's so close to downtown. And I know the gentleman that with the red truck, as you see, I, I, I know that person. And I know this property that I bought was a nuisance in the area. And so my idea was to reverse that. So we've already put in 
two new furnaces where there was only one furnace. I ripped out all the duct work. Uh, another plumbing project's coming. We're doing some other stuff with basement stairs. Um, we're really going to make it a good uh, shining example for the neighborhood. So um, some landscaping is going in next spring. But the driveway is the key piece of this property because if it's going to be a rental, a single family house, even its zoned office space, we really need a driveway just to par put your car because the public school uh, building, they all have permits. And what I notice is that they park, they line the street right here with cars during the day, which makes it even more difficult for everybody. So um, that's the reason we're trying to stay as far away from the fence as we possibly can. We only need 10 feet, so I would rather not be on top of my building nor the fence. Um, so that's uh, the plan right now. So, so is that a two family or one family? It's a two family. Okay, so. Upper lower. Right. What I was thinking with respect to uh, acquirement, the requirement of a hardship, okay, is what he's got here, and you, you probably saw when you saw the property. I actually drove the alley that he's talking yeah, about. Me too. Yeah, me too. He has a car parked back here, and so you've got one driveway for a two-family. Well, how yeah. does that work? Yeah, I don't know. That's, the, that's kind of hard. That's some pretty clear uh, negotiation between the tenants as far as, you know, who's where in the driveway. Who's leaving first in the morning? <laughs> so, and I saw this and I thought, well, wow, you know, gee, that's awful skinny in there, you know. It's you can get two cars in there. Can you? I think. From what I could, maybe I'm wrong. It looked like you would fit two cars. It just is a fact are, that who's going to leave first. Yeah, well, are you going to right. continue to use the back of the lot as a parking space for one tenant and the side for another? I mean, I Correct. Would yes, that's, okay. that's the idea. Um, be, yeah, number one, we don't want the tenants fighting over parking spaces. Uh, number two, it makes it easier for everybody. It looks better as well. And it's enough to at least, you could probably fit two cars or work with the new driveway, but we're just really looking just for one car to go there. Then it eliminates a lot of hassle and a lot of grief for everybody. So, so when you say you're going to have a concrete driveway here, correct, and you're going to have one foot here and one foot here, what's going to be in that one foot spot? I'm going to put um, some gravel down next to the building. Um, in my experience, I don't like it when driveways are right up to a house um, that leaves the door open for foundation issues, in my opinion. So if I can keep it away from my house as much as I can, I'd like to. Um, but we are just looking for just put some stone down there. So nothing fancy um, as, as far as right next to the house. Stone on both sides or just one? Yeah, if there's space on both sides, we want to, yes, definitely put some stone down, help with uh, drainage. Um, putting grass on either side, that's going to be tough, especially with all that shade. It's going to do probably more harm than good for aesthetics. Questions for anyone? Okay, sir, you can have a seat. We'll deliberate. <coughs> I'm like, I'm like you on this one, Tom, except for the last one. In the perfect world, you would have preferred something else. For me, in the perfect world, something else would have been done, but need is obvious. Crying out for a variance, obvious. I don't like the solution, but what else, gonna do? What else are we going to do? Yeah. So, I'm okay with this. Did you have any comments, Paul, one way or the other? Tiny lot. Yeah. So oh, do we have all the tiny. do we have all the variances here? I mean, there's obviously a side yard, but there must be a well. I don't think when the application was submitted it was reviewed for impervious coverage. But <laughs> <laughs> the applicant <laughs> talked about right. maybe redoing the parking lot to the north it could be captured at that time. I don't but he'll, he's already. I think he's over. When I when I first saw this, frankly, I looked at it on on Google, and you kept talking about the east side of your property and I'm thinking, well wait a minute, there's no he must have been something else. And then I thought, oh my God, that's that's a one piece of property there. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> so I see your situation. We've had situations like this before, impossible ones downtown. We had Mr. Comer in here asking for exactly the same thing about two years ago. Yeah. And we gave him his. It's not 
It's really not. It's not ideal because it's really not enough room for the door swings. Yeah. So when they get out of the door, they're going to be <laughs> probably scrunched. But at least on the west side of it. But, but uh, you know, depends on the size it, of the vehicle. It's got to help to get something off the street. Uh, right. I, I just can't see how we can deny this. So. Me too. It's my rant. <laughs> All right. I agree. All right. Make a motion to approve the variance. I'll second. All right. We've had a motion made and seconded to uh, approve the variance for Mr. Tetzner on Howard Street. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Fantastic, guys. Thanks. Yep. Lastly, but not least, mm -hmm. we've got two. Six. Six is here. Glenn, we need what, a chance to get signed. What am I doing oh, here? Yeah. I'm sorry. But you can come <laughs> on over. We can get that later, I guess. All right. We can do number we can do number six before we do number seven. Yes. Hi. You're Mr. Sherman? I am. And you have a sign on Broadway Street. I do, yes. Uh, on, on the front of my business. Uh, it is already up. Uh, it has been up for some time. Uh, this was a mistake on my part. Um, we had signs made from two different companies, and uh, this was originally in our in my plan uh, for the signage. The it was made from a different company. In I assumed during the building process that this when the sign uh, signs were approved that they were all approved, and and I should have thought to myself that one sign company is not going to put in an approval for another sign company. So um, this was completed about six months after, uh, six to eight months after uh, the building build out was finished. Uh, then we mounted it at that time. Uh, it was brought to my attention then um, recently that it is not part of the approval. So uh, I went to apply for that and we found out that the height is 10 feet uh, from the sidewalk. Uh, that it needs to be it is at nine feet right now um, when it was installed uh, I, I used uh, the judgment I used was based on what was next to it uh, as far as how high things had to be um, I assume that since the signage in the area most of it is uh, at the same height as where we put the bottom of that sign uh, so I again it did not uh, do my research and it's at but it I looked at the top of it, and it, it's close to flush with the top of the building. Didn't want it to extend over the top of the building. And then, um, uh, like I said, we also have those. There's two mailboxes right below it. Uh, those aren't aren't mine, but uh, those are on the street. So when I looked at it, it didn't seem to impinge upon the uh, uh, sidewalk or or any area uh, that wasn't already, I guess, being impinged upon by the mailboxes so right now if uh, I guess the hardship is I would have to try and move it a foot up if, uh, and it's been approved by on Broadway um, it was originally approved by uh, approved by OBI and then I just went to the uh, Historic Preservation Committee and they gave me approval pending uh, the variance appeal I believe that part of your argument also was that there are signs nearby that are about that same height? Well, that was the, that's what I used for um It appears to me anyway yeah. that that awning that you see there is about, is lower than 10, might be about 9, but I can't say for sure. It's, it's below 9. Um, there's a number of signs uh, up and down Broadway and all over the city, for that matter, that I'm sure, um, you know, they go up and and uh, people do the same thing I do, is not check closely enough at to where it's supposed to be, and, and they eye it up and do that. But um, it, it is, it's higher than, say, the, all the awnings at plant in place are under eight feet. Um, you know, so I'm, I, I guess, uh, judging by the, the street itself or the area, it seems to fit in, um, at least from my eye. It yes, looks, it looks really nice. <laughs> I made a mistake when I was looking at the property. I caught it from the front, where you've got that real fancy sign that's set in to the bricks. And yeah. Said, well, he can't make that higher. He's got to raise the building. <laughs> yeah. So no. this is. It's the cigar, the one that says cigars on it. It's right. a wooden sign with copper. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul, the argument is that there's a potential disruption of 
pedestrian traffic or it could interfere with somebody raising an umbrella or some Correct. real tall guy walking down the street or just something. carrying something right so the, the ordinance is 10 and it doesn't uh, apparently include or incorporate whether or not it sticks out very far because this apparently doesn't stick out very Right, and the applicant's going through the sign permitting process right now, so he was diligent about getting the application and there's review through the Department of Public Works because this actually hangs over to the right of way, so and he's taking all the right steps to kind of correct this issue. I'm good. I'm okay. good. So am I. You can have a seat, sir. Yeah, I'm this. I make a motion to approve the variance as requested. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the variance requested in, on the uh, 159 North Broadway property, item number six tonight. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank You're you. Good. <coughs> Finally. Finally. <laughs> All right, you're Mr. Uh, O'Brien. I am. And you're here to talk about Gandrud's paving. Correct. Um, let's see. Here. In 2013, we came in to ask for variance for. Oh, point out. Oh, I'm correct if I'm wrong. I think it's this area here. That's what I remember. Yeah. We came in for this, and then in 2014, we came in for somewhere in here. I think that lot, the vacant lot. It's showing bacon on the area. Oh, this one here. Yeah. Oh, came sorry. in no. right for here. I know. We, yeah, we yep. came in there. Yep. And <clears throat> Jerry Schmidt and Dan Mangles are the ones that came in. I may have just been in the audience. And when we filled out the applications, we put the parcel numbers down for, in 2013, there was three parcels here, and we put all three of them down. And now they had to be combined for two for uh, the city. And then when we did this one, this was just, I think, uh, the, these two parcels here. And we made the assumption, since it was specific, specified as the parcels asking for that variance, we assumed that we wouldn't have to come through. So now, uh, again, that the variance was granted for those parcels. So now what happened is we are doing this north side. And he's, as you see right there, it's staying the same. He, it, it's the asphalt is just beat the crap. So he wants to repave it. And when I submitted it, the city came back with a, uh, had to meet the interior landscape requirements. And that is what we've come through the last three times is to eliminate them. And they've all been approved. So we assumed, since these were asked for in 2013, I think it was, that it, we, it was already a mute point, but it's not. Um, staff told me that it's not it's uh, project specific, not site specific. So what I'm asking for is to <coughs> ask that, because he's, he's also going to be doing this in the spring, this whole side. What we're asking for is, and, and it'll include this whole development of Dan's that it sh since it's been granted twice already, or three times, that it's, it just stays with, as long as Mangles owns the properties. So we don't have to keep coming back and asking for the variance. Otherwise, I'll be back here in a month and a half, two months. So right now, you're not just asking for the north part. That is correct. I am asking for the entire development parcel-wise, not project-specific. Okay. Because um, do, you want us, do you want us to vote that way? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you right now, I'll vote. And the reason being, I'm Sydney. Why would you want us to keep coming back in for the interior landscape? I'm not, not going to give. I'm not. I'm just one one of three. Yeah, but correct. I'm not, not going to give you a blanket variance. I'm just not. For the interior. Yeah, absolutely interior. not. Absolutely not. It's one thing to consider about what you asked for in the back. Correct. It's to me, it's quite another thing to ask for what you're asking for up near your property, up near your building there. And so I, I will vote no. If you, if you want a blanket, you got a, you got one vote no right here. Okay. 
I frankly, sir, I am pissed that you came in and expected to get a blanket variance with no need other than the plain economic argument that I don't like the way the ordinance goes and I think I deserve another variance because I got one before. Wrong. At least regarding me, I'm one of three, but I will vote absolutely no. Well, and, and just to uh, ask or uh, respond to that is, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it because Dan Mangles I, told not, me to do it. So I know. This, I'm this, just telling you that you're representing something. I'm representing somebody. But that's what. And that's he what was under this impression too that it was done that way. And I said it is not. They told me it's uh, project specific. One of the questions that I did ask, and I'll ask it again, Paul. If that street wasn't there, this would be a little bit different in a way. As far as? Well, to some extent, I guess, if that were a public, if that were not a public street or a private driveway, I might actually react differently to this. It right now, it's a public street that he's proposing to get a variance on interior landscaping on a parking lot that's fairly close to the street. Right. I don't think there's ever going to be a case where it's they're all combined. I think there are different entities, right? There's right. Nis Nissan's right. Yep. An entity, and this is Nissan. This is Chevy. Yeah. You know, yeah. So from but a land division perspective, it's different. They all combine them all into one. They are. Okay. So it's one owner. It's one owner, but I think the individual ownership might be. Well, at least the parcel ownership is designated right. differently. I think that street provides critical access for police and fire. Uh, it also pre presents an issue for subdivided parcels yep. based on the ownership. So I think, you know, I suppose it's possible, but I don't foresee that in the future being combined or having the street vacated. Okay. <coughs> Questions, gentlemen? I have uh, gave my rant for the evening. My second rant. And I guess I'll, I'll throw this out there because he wants to try to get that northern parking lot in. Um, if you guys are hard and steadfast on going along with what staff says site specific or project or project specific instead of site specific I'll go either way because I gotta get this done and I'll just back I will still vote no if you're if you're gonna restrict it just to the north no no, no, no. I know I, I I that's what I'm saying I mean I I gotta get out of here with a yet, a yet, or a yet, or two to one, or one to two, <laughs> or two to one, or three zero. But I will go project specific if this board does not want to blanket those parcels. And then, like I said, I'll be back probably January. Well, I'm just one of three. I'll let the other two guys ask and discuss. What project are you talking about? Right now? Yeah. <coughs> this is what we have submitted currently right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then from here, all the way down here, it's going to be placed in the spring, just as you see it. And we are upgrading the stormwater management system to comply with the uh, DNR regs and also the City of Green Bay's regulations. So there's basically what's going to happen is that north side and that east side is going to have underground storage system man. Because uh, I don't believe there's if there's catch basins in here, they don't they don't do the job. So we're gonna be putting in bigger storm sewers along with probably five sixteenth diameter pipes underneath that. Your principal request for a variance, uh, even if it's just for the restricted part of the top is particularly for um, no interior landscaping. That 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 is the and for paving right up to the street. I assume into the yeah. It's all staying as as you see it. Correct. And I don't think that that wasn't part of it, right, Paul? That was it was just interior interior uh, landscaping. Lot landscaping is what, we what, what they identified. They didn't identify the parking asphalt that close to the street because I. I think that was approved well before we got involved with Manglas, that that was allowed. I have two comments. Go ahead. <coughs> the first is, 
I would rather see this be addressed as it comes up in that part of the big project. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll give you an example here with respect to interior landscaping. Uh, I did look over the numbers and the arguments with respect to how many cars are on a lot and what we're going to lose if we do interior landscaping. Okay. Uh, the Packers were here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they came in with a request to make modifications to uh, the area by Lambeau Field. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of their arguments was, okay, one is snow removal and the other is uh, safety of the people who were tailgating because they could trip over. Mm -hmm. But what they offered, okay, in lieu of interior landscaping per the design of the city, was they offered an area in a different part of the lot for the green space that the interior landscaping would have, mm -hmm. okay? So I understand with respect to moving cars in and out and snow removal, I understand that too. But I think you need to understand that there is a quid pro quo here. If we get a break, if we give you a break with respect to the interior landscaping, you need to give us a break by giving back something as well. It's not all cost per square foot and how many cars per square foot. Okay. Okay. So I would think that you could take that under advisement. I will. I will. There could be some mitigation that could occur. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yes, uh, if you offered us some mitigation, there may be some um, <coughs> some different opinions of the board. But perhaps uh, we should uh, explain what our concerns are and defer this and let the applicant come back. Oh, that sounds. That sounds good. Yeah, I mean, because if we deny, you're done for a year, correct? Correct. But this application was added at the very last minute, as you may know, and there's right. a cold weather season coming shortly. So I, I can't speak for the applicant, but I think there's a pressing matter but, yeah, to I, I can't to get that resolved. If, if you're going to deny me, and that's that's going to have to be it. But okay. <coughs> I need at least to get the north parking lot down, because what he, he what he started to do is. I made a phone call to uh, inspection department to find out if I needed to get permits for that, and he told me as long as we just milled it, took up the uh, base coat, you could do whatever you wanted. And supposedly, um, when they took the top coat off, the binder coat was shot, so they started taking that out, and we're going to compact the gravel that was underneath there, and that's why I'm here. It becomes a reconstruction, basically. It's an existing lot, but it's basically new construction. Otherwise, he, he could just mill it, and there was... Yeah, he needs a variance to do what he wants to do. That is correct. He does. Yeah, because otherwise, he would just mill it. My rationale is that that's, a, that's an area that specifically, to my mind, is an application of the ordinance. And uh, um, however flexible I may have been on some of the arguments that uh, you or your associates may have made before on other... Rear, rear parking lots I'm not prepared to do there and the one that's right at the end of a public street besides. Okay. I, my rationale would be that I think that the ordinance is just fine so I wouldn't give you variance for it. I would expect to see um, interior landscaping. Okay. I think, it, I think it helps you. I don't think it hurts you. But I'm not, I'm not uh, here to make business judgments but I'm also here not to make uh, uh, at least for my vote, a variance judgment based solely on economics. Okay. And uh, that's the only argument I've gotten, so I'm still going to be no unless we decide that we would like to defer this and give the applicant another chance. If he, however, believes that he needs something tonight, well, that's my vote. Um, you guys can decide how you want it. Split your reserve. What do you think? I agree with you. <coughs> That, yeah, if you want all or nothing, you're going to walk out with nothing. If you want to come back and talk to us about other alternatives to what can be done, then... So does that does that mean that he's off for a year, though? Paul? You deny him, Paul? Uh, or do you defer and let for him this have an opportunity to talk about other projects, options? It's project-specific, so... I think this is one project, there might be another one coming in January, I think they're entitled to make that application at that time, so okay. if this is denied, I think you're, you're right, it's probably a year for that particular project. Yes. I think that um, 
if we have a request before us to waive that one year, I think we have in the past. I, I think you have some discretion, sure. Yeah. I think that's that's up to you to make it things reasonable for the applicant, sure. Sure. We have that we have been asked to reconsider occasionally. So I, I don't I'm not saying we, we would say yes or no, but right. we could. So and I'm on board. I'm on board with denying. Okay. Okay. <coughs> One of you guys can make the motion. I'll I'll make a motion to deny the request for variance. I'll second it. Okay, regarding the uh, request for the variance on the property on the Gandry Motor Company property on the Puddleway Plaza, we've had a motion made and seconded to deny the requests for the variances before us. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thanks. Yep. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Aye.